Verse 3, he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. He's just placed another bird. And he rejoiced about the bird. You get to the place where church is a bird and you can no longer rejoice about it. You've missed the message. You've missed the Messiah. You've missed the Savior. If the church is putting too much on the house of God, they call it the house of God today. Yeah. It has become a problem. You've missed it. saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which is lost. Pay attention to this one. Pay attention. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over the ninety-nine just persons which need no repentance. See, you don't see it there, but there's a difference between the carnal and the thankful. Let's lay our Bibles down. I doubt I'm going to wow any of you with any type of articulation or revelatory speaking. But if we're here for the intent of pleasing the Lord instead of the Lord and the I believe something amazing could happen in this place. Lord, we love you. We thank you. And we want to thank you right now for all the times that we don't realize that we were that one lost land. In fact, there are maybe some of those lost lambs in this place right now. We've lost our way in you. We're trying to find a place of what the world would call balance. But yet, what it really means is to just place God on the same standing as the things of this world. Pray God for a revelation, an understanding, and a revival of intimacy with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That we would truly be the church, the called out ones that are about the Father's business and a concern with his house. And everybody said in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. Share, Sister Sherry, it's good to see you. We've been praying for you. Amen. Amen. There was a book written by a Stephen Galkiger. He tells a story of a pastor who saw the need to bring his 99 righteous sheep back into the fold. So he put an advertisement in the local paper. It went something like this. Lost, stolen, or strayed, a large flock of sheep. They had been gone for some time. When last seen, they were browsing along the road of indifference. Anyone finding these sheep, please bring them home if possible, and you will receive ample reward. If they refuse to come, drive them to the nearest fold, lock the door, and report to the undersigned. Plenty of fodder will be provided on Sunday. <laughs> We've all seen sheep before. They aren't exactly kings of the jungle. In fact, according to the Texas Sheep and Goat Raisers Association, they are easy prey for predators because they can't protect themselves and they're easy to catch. And if you think about it, really 
only common sense. Anybody ever been to a rodeo or watched what they let the kids ride? Instead of horses and bulls, they, they ride sheep. Sheep are gentle and docile and somewhat harmless. But going back to what Jesus is talking about here in this text, who are the sheep? The sheep are you and I. The sheep are the ones that he's come to seek and to save. It's an awful thing to be lost. I've been around long enough to even hear some of those that you think have a corner on being saved be so confused as to Well, how do I say it? I'm in trouble if I do, and I'm in trouble if I don't. And that's why the Lord is very clear and says the sheep must have a shepherd. We've all heard the story preached on, taught on, expounded on. However, there are a few things that I think I can expound on today few things that stand out that I believe are worthy of sharing. First notice that, that Christ declares that if you lose one of them, if he lose one of them, the emphasis is that on the lost sheep or that lone sheep that's lost its way, but rather you as the shepherd lost one of your sheep. I take this personal. Oh, wait. Did he just point to me? How dare Jesus blame the shepherd, right? Well, think about it. The shepherd is responsible for the care and the welfare of the sheep. What was the shepherd busy doing? To let or to allow the one one to slip away. See, see, we live in a world today that never wants to take ownership. We spend time placing blame and a lot of blame. I haven't said this in years, but I used to say the reason nobody's rich is because all you ever do is pass the buck. Was there a lack of vigilance on part of the shepherd? Was there a little idleness about the job? Was the shepherd busy doing other things? Where was the shepherd at to lose one? And I say this for the sake of where I'm going to take this in a minute, but if the sheep had been in the fold of David, I really doubt that one of them would have been lost if you know your Bible. So what is Jesus saying here? And I know right now it seems like it's all focusing on me, but pay attention. Jesus is basically telling the Pharisees present, you lost your sheep and you didn't go after it. So I'm going to show up. I'll go get it. And I'll bring it home. So in other words, some of us, listen, you're mad at Jesus for doing what you should have done to begin with. Oftentimes you will find that working in the kingdom of God or the church is much like this. Individuals who have their priorities, spiritual priorities correct, their priorities are right, Step into the field, into the church, into the kingdom of God, of labor. 
and begin to do what others should have been doing all along. And instantly, jealousy, strife, and resistance occur. What's the problem? Someone's just doing what you should have done many times before. Why are you upset now? Ezekiel points to something, and this is not a new problem. He speaks about, in, in Ezekiel 22 and 30, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. If God seeks for someone to stand in the gap and make up the hedge and finds none, guess what? He will robe himself in flesh and come himself. Did he not? Or in the case of right now, someone who will. Secondly, and this is extremely important, there is a serious precedent set when a shepherd doesn't go after one lost sheep. See, I know y'all get my phone calls. My text messages. Sometimes they come far apart. Sometimes they just keep coming. But I'm responsible. How many of you call your children? You check on them. Had a, one of the ladies in the church text me this week. Want to know where her husband was. Now, nothing like that. I felt that. He was doing just fine. His phone just wasn't working. We have that problem in my home, too, but normally Sister Crow. <laughs> but there's a serious precedent set here that the shepherd didn't go after the one lost sheep. I like it when I get texts and phone calls. Thank you. She's not in here, but Sister Faith wanted to let me know that she was praying for me yesterday. That made me feel like a million bucks. I got a text this morning from one of the leadership in the church. Hey, Pastor, I'm praying for you. You need anything? Let make me feel good. Man, I'm, I, I hope you may say I bug you with my counsel and my constant trying to get a hold of you. Sister Crow and I, you have to understand something. We care. We're not part-time pastoral ministry. We're full-time. I know that bothers some people because you want us to do it like you did, but I ain't going down that road. Didn't work for you? I'm going to do it this way. You know what I'm saying? When, what we fail to recognize is that shepherds' perseverance to go after the one does something to the other 99. It brings security to them. How many know that they're glad to know that when something goes wrong, Jesus is coming? Yes. Think about it. The other 99 had the security of knowing that, wow, he knows we're good. He's going after the one. Isn't that what we should do? When you mature as a Christian, when you mature as a saint of God and come in, you, you ought, it ought to be saying, hey, what can I do, Pastor? Because I'm going after the one. Mm. If the flock sees the willingness of the shepherd to search for the one, and sees that the shepherd is willing to fight for the one, it reveals to the flock this intrinsic value that they have in the eyes of the shepherd. That's why it's important for a real shepherd to be undistracted. Because if the sheep see that the shepherd barely gives a second glance or makes very little clamor over one lost sheep and just, well, they easy come, easy go, It reveals to the flock or the church, which is comprised of individual sheep, 
that they themselves as individuals are not valuable enough to search after if they find themselves lost. I want to be someone you can get a hold of. I must be about my father's business. I'm thankful that he came looking for me. No, 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 no. no. I, if you ever get anything about this, you have to understand. So how many know God came looking for you? How many know that even when you were messed up and intentionally messing up, he was still looking for you? How many know right here and right now in your mess, in your sin, in your ugly spirited attitude and the comments and the ugly diatribe that comes out of your mouth, talking against the church and talking against the pastor and talking about the things of God, God was still there going, I'm still coming. I'm still coming. I'm still coming. I'm still coming. Oh, thank God. Thank God that even in our mess, even in our anger, even in our hatred of the very thing reaching for, as we ripped him, as we scourged him, as we spat on him, as we, as we, as we placed him on the cross, as we put a crown of horror, thorns on it, he's still coming. Oh, thank God for a full-time shepherd. I don't want a hireling. I don't want a part-time shepherd. I don't want a shepherd that's got to worry about this and worry about that. I want a pastor and a shepherd that's worried about me. Careful what you say you think you want in a man of God. I've watched it. I've been around it. I'm thankful. For a full-time pastor that's looking to care about me. I've seen it the other way. I've seen it completely successful in the things of the world, but they don't really have time for the church. They got everything the world could offer in an anemic little church with a bunch of people. Why? God can only give you what you'll take care of. What do you think the problem in the world? Oh, boy, I don't mean to get on here. We got grandparents raising babies because parents didn't want to take care of it. That's happening in churches today. Are you hearing what I'm saying? People need someone that's going to love them and come for them. How many are thankful you know someone's coming? Just listening. Now, I'm different than y'all. I'm all about researching and studying stuff, crazy stuff. Don't make sense. I'm doing research on shark attacks, survival rate and what happens and what's going on and all that kind of stuff. And I'm standing out here because them spotlights are killing me. I've had a, that's not a migraine. I don't know what you call it, but I've had a, whatever this is for two days now. I can barely handle the light. But yeah, whatever, but it, I ain't got time for that. This, this lady was, was, just had a bite. She should have survived it. The ambulance was coming, but the ambulance broke down. And they had to send for another one. We ain't got time for a broke down church. We ain't got time for broke down shepherds. We ain't got time for shepherds distracted in the things of this world. Careful what you pray for. Careful what you ask for. My God, Pastor, get on my toes. Get in my life. Tell me. Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm thankful he came looking for me. I'm thankful that in my mess and in my anger, when I was angry at God, and I was up and I said, God don't care about me, and I'm doing drugs, and I'm throwing my life away, and yet he still came knocking on my door and stepping in my life, upsetting my apple cart, taking my pride, throwing it down, and telling me to humble myself and get right. You're getting mad at the thing coming for you. How would you really feel if the ambulance, spiritual ambulance broke down and didn't show up? 
Jesus is the great shepherd. Matthew 9 and 36, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Oh, God, I need a shepherd. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my God, I don't know about you, but I need a shepherd in my life. Uh, I need a man of God. I need a church. I need saints. I need every one of you in my life. I need the change. He chose the church. He chose the house of God. This is an important house. This is the house of God. And for you ministry folks that are here today, go read the first two chapters of Haggai and understand how God thinks about his house versus your house. Don't buy into the American ideology that you're successful here because you have a house. You can be lost with a house. You need the house of God. Amen. That's the house. Amen. You, better make, you better make sure that God sees you taking care of the house that matters, the eternal house. You better hear what I'm saying. It's funny what will pour into our homes. And that's why the dollar bill is famous here. And the hundreds are at home or in your pocket. You see, when a shepherd pays a high ransom for one lost sheep, the whole flock is given the deepest and most profound sense of security. I'm going to be honest with you. I love hearing testimonies. Oh, I'm thankful for Brother Corey, your testimony moves me now. When I, Brother, Brother Bruce, your, your, te your testimony is every day. That, man, that, that, that man's got more lives than Felix the cat dreamed of having. And we joke around it and we, and we laugh, but you don't understand. There's some of you sitting here right now that, my God, if it hadn't been for Jesus, if it hadn't been for the shepherd, if it hadn't been for a church, if it hadn't have been some of you had been in a gut, if it hadn't been for God, you'd have been broke and destitute and never would have done anything in this life. You ought to thank God that he came looking for you. Thank God for a focused shepherd. Now I'm going to switch this. You have to understand that when God sent people into my life, they were an extension of the shepherd. I didn't have a shepherd. So as I went to work, there was somebody there being an under shepherd. And sadly, he watched my life. He watched, and every time I turned around, he was caring about me. Isn't that weird? Who in the world really cares about you? Here I am. I lost my dad. I was this crazed, just ridiculous, angry person. And God sends this guy in my life to care about me. At first, it bothered me because it touched on a nerve. that I lost my dad. Ain't no one going to care about me here on out. But he kept caring. The sister Peaches, he kept caring. He would, he would show up. I would be mean to him on purpose. I would make his job harder. I would make his life miserable. And you know what he would do? I love you, Steve. And he'd, and he'd do the work. He didn't get distracted. He didn't let his feelings get, his pride didn't go out. He saw a lost sheep. Oh, lost sheep. Anybody ever been lost before? Yeah. See, because if you truly remember being lost, you recognize the loss and you'll have a burden. Thank God for a focused full-time shepherd, not distracted by the things of this world, not a part-time hireling, not distracted by the things of this life. Herein is the value of what Christ did for us. John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. How many remember when Jesus was speaking to Peter when he was speaking to Peter? Follow me in our textbook today. John 10, 15, John 21, 15 through 17. So when they had dined, 
Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep, feed my lambs. You love God? You're going to care about sheep. You're going to care about the house of God. He saith unto him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. No, he knows that you said it. He saith unto him, feed my sheep. He saith unto him a third time, Simon, son of Jonas, Jonas, lovest thou me? Me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him a third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. He answered his own question and knew there was a struggle. Thou knowest that I love thee, Jesus saith unto him, the proof is in the pudding. Are you feeding yourself or are you feeding the sheep? while all those sat around engorged and full from their meal, feeding their faces and their appetite for the flesh. Jesus saying, I need a shepherd that will feed the sheep. I need a shepherd that will deny himself, lay some things aside, whether it's sin or carnality or any other distraction, so that he would focus on feeding the sheep. That's why you, you think I'm switching, but I'm not. That's why you must be born again. You don't just come to church. Now you can come to a building, but you just don't come to church. You're born into the church. You get in the bloodline. You're born again. And you're born into a new house. And this house trumps that house. Because that house is now focused fully on this house. Amen. Anything else is a thief and a robber and a hireling. It's this house becomes the most important house because this is your eternal, look around, this is your eternal family. This is your eternal family. Are you, this is, ah, look around. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's the blood of this house. It's the blood of this house that matters. You can turn around and think your name means all that, but I hate to break it to you. There's only one name that means anything in eternity, and that's Jesus' name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of you, some of you, I, I get it. I know you, you got the American gospel so down, so good, and you think you're so right, but you don't realize you've been deceived. There's only one house going to glory. There's only one name you can get there by. It ain't yours. It ain't mine. It's his. You can stand around and think your name means all that and think you're bad to the bone, but let me tell you something. There's only one who shed blood for the house. Peter, you got a shepherd. You got to be a shepherd that will feed the flock. You got to set the example. You got to value the sheep of his pasture. This is the value being instilled in the parables of the lost coin and the lost sheep. You. And I'm almost done here. You mean you're going to go through all that for a coin? Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? You're going to go through all that? She, she's really not talking about a coin. He's talking about what he did for us. And that when we get in the house, we do it for the house. <laughs> You mean you're going to go through all that for, for one lost sheep? What man of you? I mean, a hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find. Yep, I'll do that. You know, I was kind of kind of really tickled when she started singing that part of that song, Hell Lost Another One. Someone was sweeping the house. Mm. 
someone left and went to find that lost sheep to get them back to the sheep. Oh, my God, maybe I need See, you don't understand. I didn't know there was a house. I didn't know there was blood, and I didn't know there was a name until someone came looking for me and at that little job that I had as a broken teenager reached out and said, there's a home with a name and the blood that you need to belong to. I'll sweep the house. I'll search the highway. And I'm all, oh, if you've been found, that ought to put you on your feet. If you've been found, that ought to set you up. If you know you've been, oh, hallelujah. Hell lost another one today. Hell lost another one today. Hell lost another. You know, oh my God. <laughs> saved people want to save people. Saved people want to say, saved folk are going to be about saving folk. Those that have been swept up, those that have got pulled out of the dirt and the grime and the corner of this world are going to value this house. They're going to value the name of this house. They're going to value this house and realize, my God, what a house. What a house. What a place to call home. What a name. What a name. That's above everything. You don't understand, world. This is the house. We got to get them in this house. Grab your brooms. Get your binoculars. Let's start fighting. Oh, somebody. Are you bothered? It's a brush stroke coming against your cheek. Are you upset right now? Because maybe this don't set you on fire. Because you realize, I kind of been missing what the house is about. I, I, I kind of misplaced the value of the name. I, I've kind of been valuing my blood over his blood. You feel the brush stroke of a broom reaching for you. You see the peering eyes of a shepherd looking down in the crevice that you slipped to. And yeah, he's coming. He's coming. Oh, some of you ought to realize he's coming for you today. He's sweeping for you today. He's looking for you today. You have value in this house. You will only pass away from your house. But this house, you don't pass away from. This house goes on forever and ever and ever. And now I want to be in this house. I want the name of this house. I want the blood of this house. Hell, lost another one. Hell, lost another one. For God so loved you and I that he wants you to have everlasting life. You feel the, you feel the broom hitting you today. You feel the peering eyes of the Lord reaching for you today. Oh, somebody. Let me go ahead and press this just a little further. What does it say about you and I? What does it say about our church? What does it say about our walk with God? What does it say about our Intimacy, full circle, if we show very little pursuit. Yeah. And they all at one began to make excuses. I, I got this to do. I got to go do that. And with the little pursuit and the little effort and any attempt to help anybody find their way. Mm -hmm. There's a gentleman who's been to his friend's funeral. And he was coming home and 
from across country and was driving, somehow got lost on a state road. And he turned and got confused. He found himself in a wooded area and he got out and he starts looking around and he really didn't go far, but he got turned around just enough to where now he didn't know where his car was. Lost. He's dressed in a suit, probably about like mine. He's been to a funeral. One day goes by. He's sitting there in the woods. I don't know where to go. And he thinks, I hear the sound of traffic, but I can't. I don't know where it's, what it is. And two days go by. Things are getting desperate. Can't find his vehicle, doesn't know where he's at. He's lost in the woods. Third day, it gets treacherous. He's, he's teetering on death. But it rains, and he's able to get some of the rain and drink and keep himself somewhat hydrated. All of a sudden, he doesn't realize this, but he's been reported missing. And then some bike riders saw a vehicle out in the park, out at the end of a state road. And when it didn't make sense, it'd been there for a couple of days. They told the police, police went to investigate. And one of the officers got out and just started circling around it. And he, and he just sees this, this body laying over and he starts running towards it. And the man laying there, half dead. Anybody know the story of the Samaritan? You know, so he, he sits up and says, oh, I'm so glad to see you. And the police officer, what are you doing here? And he told him the story. He said, well, your, your, your car is 50 yards over here. But it didn't really matter how close or how far if someone didn't show up. Oh, see, see, see. The enemy wants you to think and to lose value over this house. Wants to make you think that that house, oh, I know, I know you got your name on it and you're all that and your big bad bag of chips, you got every whatever. But it's these folks that come looking for you. It's this house that comes looking for you. It's this house that has the name and the bloodline. This is the family. This is the home. This is the house that matters. This, this is the one that sends people looking for folks. <laughs> ah, <laughs> see, 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 that's the plan of God. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out in the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. That, 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 that my, that my, that my CC7 you have spent so much time filling your house and you got anything and you got everything. You got bragging rights and whatever. But it's this house that needs to be filled. It's this house that needs to matter because we may not always realize it. But we're setting a precedent which declares that we're nothing more than a Pharisee if we're only living a standard of forsaken reaching out for the lost. You got standards, but you're not reaching for anybody. You got standards that you're proud of and arrogant about, but you're not teaching a Bible study. You're not praying. You're not acting. You got all these things that you're doing, and your house is this, and your house is that, and your job. And some of us got accolades all over the wall, Sister Crystal. We got all sorts of stuff. We can brag about our job. I'm thankful for our job. I'm not, don't, don't get me wrong here, but those are a means to a better end. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did. I'm going I'm to make that man serve this man. I'm going to make that world serve this world, not taking my Christianity to serve. God didn't bless you to you'd abuse you. God didn't give you all that for you to be lost because you focus on the wrong house. Oh, my God in heaven, someone needs to hear. I know, I know that's a little painful to hear sometimes. I don't know about you. But when I think about how I got here, 
when I stop to realize and I look back and I give an honest summation and accounting, Bill Lewis, this teenage boy, come to his dad and said, Dad, I need $20. Dad said, okay. He handed him a lot of cash, and his son counts it out, and 17 ones. And he got to the end of that, and there were three $1 bills out of Monopoly money. And he said, Dad, you only gave him $17. He says, no, I gave you 20 He said, I counted it, there's only 17 He said, no, you're auditing me. Some people are going to be spiritually audited. Oh, Jesus. See, it's funny. We played with real money in our house, but we come in here with monopoly money. I'm glad no one shortchanged my salvation. I don't know about you. I want to give hell a headache. I want to fill this house with the lost. I want to fill God. I, I, I want the great shepherd to be moved by this shepherd. No, no, no. See, see. I didn't say pastor. I said shepherd. All, all sheep can reach other sheep. I, I, I want to reach another sheep. See, I know, I know some of you, you're not ready to let go of all that because you got so much, you're like that rich young ruler. Yeah, you got it all together, but you're not ready to be like Jesus because I would take everything. Who's ready to shepherd some folks into the house of the Lord? You've met him, you've heard me talk about him. Brother Monroe shepherded me. He shepherded me. Brother Bruce, he took the time to come into my life. He took the time to invite and include. And yes. Who are you shepherding? Saved people, saved people. Who, who are you reaching for? Because if you're about this house, you're like Peter, and you're going to be feeding those the Lord loves. Who's ready to replace and reinstate the value into the house of God. Who's ready to go steal? Folks, from right out from under Satan's nose. Who's ready for hell to lose another one? Who wants to grab someone right out of Satan's grasp? Who wants to be about the kingdom of God? Who say, yeah, I'm going to forsake all because I want his house. I understand this shepherd. He swept for me and reached for me and came for Oh, I tell you what, that's done, sir. I want one more. I want one more. I got to get one more. Let me show you something. I'm going to close. <laughs> I'll do that different next time. I got a whole other message on this, but I'm just going to touch on it. Oh. I heard that laugh over there. In 1 Samuel. <clears throat> Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, see, here's the qualifications of a shepherd. Hello? Come on, come on. Thy servant kept his father's sheep. That's That's what it is. That's what it is. I am my brother's keeper. Come on. Come on. We're all shepherds in a way. There came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. They weren't his. They were his daddy's. 
See, I, 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 you don't understand. I'll be coming for you. A shepherd's going to care more about coming for you than what he can get for himself. And he says, when that lion, that bear said, and I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. See, when you do that, and he says, and he rose against me. And I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. My servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David wasn't fighting for David. See, people, you may not understand the church, and you may not understand the house of God, but you belong to him. And he wants you to be with him. And there's something that's written about David in Acts 13 and 22. And we all know that Saul ended up not caring and you have to understand, and I talked about this last Wednesday, about the land that belonged to Judah. You see, if you don't take ownership here, you won't care what happens here. If you don't really become part of the family and you got your own family, you'll take this. You'll have no problem rising up against it if you don't like what's going on. But ah, no, no skin off my feet, and you won't care. That's why you won't get behind here. You better have skin in the game or you don't forget it. Come on. That's right. You better be with me. Preach it. Come on. Ooh, I just realized what God didn't put in the Bible. Your opinion. That's right. <laughs> How many is ahead of your house? Come on, men. Yes. So what? Some of you don't know. Okay, brother. I'm just checking on you, brother Jonathan. You got you got good reason to man up. You got a family that looks that good, brother. You better step up. Better, better break out them push-ups. Hello. Y'all better watch out, brother Terry. Sits back there quiet, but I'll he's slap a fool right now. I know he would. Hello. Don't let Carl's tie and career fool you. Hello? Come on, how many of you girls want to be hooked up with them limp-wristed guys that's all talk and no action? <laughs> all hat, as they say. There's going to be something about you as the head, head, head of the house, right? You have to understand, I'm working for the head of the house. I'm going to fight for the family of God. <laughs> you see, I believe God, even though David had some proclivities and problems, he states in Acts 13, 22, he rejected Saul because all Saul cared about was himself. He wasn't about to give himself for land that belonged to another tribe. Man, Brother Cole, why do y'all do like you do? See, I don't, my house ain't my house. In all honesty, and, and half of you guys have had keys to my house, going in and out of my house, I'll be even there. See, I belong to the kingdom of God. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. See, 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 the problem some people have is they don't understand. You have your house, and then you have God's house. And so at one point you were born in this house, but now you're like, nah, you're like that prodigal. See, y'all think I messed up by not talking about the prodigal. I talked about the coin and I talked about the sheep care, but I left out the prodigal. See, because some of you got too big for your britches in this house. And you made your house more. All your accolades come from your house. And then you're bummed out when you had no accolades here. And you're bummed out. You just got to stand there while there's a move of God because you walked away from the importance of this house. Not you don't show up. You're still known by this house. You're off doing your own thing with the Father's name on you, but you don't no longer represent the Father. See, if it's only important when you have to sing, then you're here for performance and not him. So it's, so it's not, yeah. 
Because if you're not reaching for sheep when you're not. Peter, lovest thou me? You're going to be feeding my sheep and you can't feed them if you're not looking for them. You can't feed them if you're not sleeping for them. In other words, let's get back to what I was saying. Hey, prodigal, it's time to get back to daddy's house and do daddy's calling and make daddy's house more important than your house. David was a man after my own heart. Why? He wasn't going to let a lion, he wasn't going to let a bear, and he wasn't going to let a giant stop him from caring about his dad's house. Let's all stand, come to the music. I'm going to close with this. See, see, I'm not looking just to reach your head. Some of you, I'm trying to reach your heart. You've fallen in love with the world. With an inferior house. This is the house. My house belongs to this house. You know why some of you call me and ask me and tell me I belong to you. I belong to you. Yeah, I'm going to say something's going to freak you out. I'm your responsibility. See, so many times like, oh, I don't know like that. I don't feel connected. It's whatever. I don't feel he needs to do this. How many change oil on your car? How many of you clean your house? And then you treat this like what? Sister Denise, the greatest value you will have is in this house, not anybody else's. No other name can save you but Jesus' name. Peaches, same thing. Carla, Brother, brother Court, all of you. Oh, I got to fall in love with this house. I got to realize the greatest house, the greatest name, the greatest bloodline I can be, that I want to make sure people know that I'm a part of. It's not my name. I don't give a rip who Steve Crow is, but I tell you what, I care who Jesus Christ is. Oh, help me get my priorities right. And help me make it plain and clear to everyone around me. How can I lead someone to Jesus if I'm so busy making that life focus that out me? And that's where Saul missed out. And this little upstart David. David didn't do that for songs. They wrote the songs because of what he did. Don't stop and think you need to get accolades. Go live a life that they'll give you accolades. You can't demand a legacy. You gotta live for one. All right, let me let me close with this. Because I want to sing that song that 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 hell lost another one. I don't mean no crying and whining up here. We're not gonna do that. The superintendent of a big company, big CEO. Look like you, brother Jonathan. You just ain't no one dressed better than you today. I mean, every thread is per you know his wife picked that out. Look at that. They even matching too. Look at that. Brother Jonathan, CEO, superintendent of a big old company, needed to call one of his employees about an urgent problem. So he dialed his employee's phone number and was greeted by a child's whisper. Feeling kind of put out at the inconvenience of having talked to a child, the boss asked, is your daddy home? Yes whispered the small voice. May I talk to him? And to the surprise of the superintendent, the small voice whispered back, no. Frustration starting to well up in him. He's wanting to talk with an adult. The boss asked him, is your mommy there? Yes, she whispered. May I talk with her? Again, that small voice whispered, no. Knowing that it was not likely that the young child would be left home alone, he decided he would just leave a message with the person who should be there watching over the child. Is there anyone else there besides you? Yes. 
Yes, whispered the child. Well, who? A policeman. Wondering what the cop would be doing at his employee's home, the concerned boss asked, well, may I speak to the policeman? No, he's busy. Frustrated, he asked, busy doing what? Talking to mommy and daddy and the firemen, came the whispered answer. Growing deeply concerned and even worried as he heard in the background what sounded like helicopters. The, ba the boss asked, what's, what's that noise? It's a helicopter, she whispered. What's going on over there, he asked, seriously alarmed. In a whispering voice, the child answered, the search team just landed in the helicopter. Alarmed and concerned, mixed with a little frustration, the boss asked, well, why are they there? Still whispering, the young voice replied, they're looking for me. They're looking for me. What makes heaven happy? What makes heaven happy? What will really make you happy? You see, even after the shepherd found the lost sheep, it wasn't about the reclaiming. The focus stayed on the sheep, but he called his friends. He called his neighbors together and said, rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. And likewise, the woman, when she found the coin, some of this is missed when you read the story, but you don't get what's in there. She had found it. She called her friends and her neighbors. She said, rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I lost. Jesus told this entire parable to tell us what makes heaven happy. He goes on and says, likewise, I say unto you, children of the house, people of the house, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner. That we ought to get happy up in this house. It's about getting the lost saved. I don't know about you, but I want to be doing the work of God. Nothing made me happier than finally getting in this house. I tell you what, I want someone else to come get happy in the house of the Lord. What is it that Joshua said? As for me and my house.